but what scenes are you looking forward to this year? What else? Hey guys, Sylvan and Muppet here in Philadelphia. I'm not sure if Muppet's gonna stay. Last year's video about seed starting was really just like my inventory of seeds. It wasn't so much about the ins and outs of actually getting them started. So I thought that I would make a few parts around my seeds starting because they were really successful last year, but I just went through, I ordered very few seeds so far this year, and I found the easiest way to decide what it is that I need more of or what I wanna look for is by going through, I save all my packets so that I have an empty packet to kind of signify like, hey, I grew a lot of this. Did I like it? Do I wanna grow more? Do I not wanna grow that? So I sort of separated the seeds. <laughs> now these are all keepers, but I'm not necessarily going to, uh, I'm picturing them shooting out like a deck of cards right now. So uh, I'm not gonna go through every single variety in here, but I am gonna go through the actual specific categories of flower seeds that I've decided to carry forward. I'm not necessarily going to grow every single one of these and I'm not going to, I may not grow all of the, the colors and varieties that I have available. I find that if you are storing your seeds in a cool, dry, mostly dark situation, very few seeds will not at least give you a few plants. So Obviously I'm not growing on like a farming or commercial scale. So I'm just trying to get a handful of plants. So one thing I did wrong last year was start too many of things. Uh, so this year, one of the things I'm gonna be working on is, while I am gonna still try to germinate a fair amount of each of these seeds, I really only want to pot up and carry forward. I really can't see needing more than nine of any one of these plants. And some of them I'll just be happy if I have three. So I, I think that last year starting, there's no reason for me on the scale that I'm growing to start a whole tray, uh, uh, 48, 72 cells of something. It's just, I don't need that. So I'm trying to make an effort to not just edit the varieties, but to start and just not have so much to maintain. Uh, because seedlings, when we get to that point, they're kind of exhausting. They need attention morning and night. So, um, so the other piles that I have here are, I have uh, a pack of seeds that I would consider more herbs and foliage. So I kind of think of these plants as herbs and foliage. And I'll go through those quickly. And then these are the discards. And that actually might be an easier place to start. So I'm not throwing away the seeds that I'm not growing. I'm just not necessarily, I'm gonna give them away or see if anybody needs them or maybe if I have the time and the space, start a few plants and then donate them. We have a new community garden down the street in our neighborhood and well, they're, I think community plots, maybe they want some pollinator friendly plants to plant around it. So here's what I'm not growing. These are seeds that don't really work for me, but coleus. I have a hard time buying annuals that just kind of get thrown away. I like a lot of coleus, but now that I am doing a little bit more gardening work on a more commercial scale for some clients, for myself, for YouTube and things like that, I have access to uh, wholesale pricing from a couple of places. And so the, the cost of a flat of coleus in my preferred colors is not so different than the cost of the seed packet and the weeks of effort trying to get them to grow. Oh, I think those were supposed to go in the, the, the good pile. Nasturtiums. <clears throat> and I'm sure some of you are gasping because this is one of the magical floret seed packets, but I'm just not a fan. They are not, they're a pretty flower and I, I think they're a delicious salad ingredient. It's just not my cup of tea. It's um, kind of mounded, round, 12 inch plant. Uh, they grow really well. You can always stick a seed in if you have a blank space and one will grow. It's just not my thing. I grew the 
very popular sounding black velvet that last year. This is Ladybird Rose, which I don't remember being as pretty as the pictures, but I think that sometimes happens with seeds from one particular place. So not, not my favorite. There are lots of other easy to grow, direct sow kind of plants that you can do. So nasturtium is just not one for me. Also don't find it to be a height that works for cut flowers, especially later in the summer when things start to get tall. Nasturtium vines are like, not that big. It's a hard one because I really love Cosmos. I, I, I've never done well starting Cosmos early and I really struggle with direct sowing things that need consistent moisture to get going. I have better luck sowing things like poppies, Larkspur delphinium that do well in like cool spring and get enough moisture from like rain and frost. Cosmos need, they just are little teeny wispy haired plants that I realize are like grow like wildflowers in places. So maybe the answer is to just throw the seeds around and see what happens. But I just have never had great luck with getting them to grow. I also think they're kind of a pain to cut. The foliage is messy, the stems are tiny and all over the place. It, it, they're a pretty whimsical, airy flower, and I buy them when they're available. I love chocolate cosmos, which are a different, slightly different type of plant, but th there's just no, I don't need double click, cups and saucers, and half of these have never even been opened. Straw flower no more. It grows well, it's easy to grow, it dries really well. I just think it's a hideous plant. And if you're growing in a field with rows where you don't really care what the plant looks like, I'm sure it's fine. But with the way that I prefer my beds to be styled, I guess is the right word, I, I don't mind a leggy looking cut flower, but the foliage on these, they, they need staking sometimes. They are just not for me. And I don't really need something that dries well. Uh, there's really no shortage of available dried flowers these days, and it's not worth it for me to take up valuable space with something that I'm not crazy about. So vintage white, apricot peach, I think there's a red wine. Oh, there's the purple red. Um, Art Shades Mixed Phlox. Now I am growing cherry caramel flax, but it's the only type of flax I'm going to grow. I'm uh, deciding not to do the art shades because I'm just not really a big fan of mixed seeds in certain varieties. And I grew, I sprinkled a handful of these around and it just wasn't colors that I was excited about. Snapdragon, it's very affordable in plug form. And it did grow well for me. This is Lucky Lips, and I think I also had like an apple blossom one last year. They're just not a plant that I really have space for in the landscape, and I'm not interested in putting it in a raised bed. Uh, White Swan Salvia, this is perennial salvia. It grew well. It was easy to transplant, but honestly, it's a tender perennial, almost a hearty perennial here, and the ones I planted last year are still there, so. I don't need more of them. Uh, Nigella, oh, there's Silvery Rose, another. And the Silvery Rose was a big bummer because it was not nearly silvery. It was just basically like a bright pink straw flower. Uh, Nigella, I think there's, yeah. Black Pod Striped Nigella, one of my favorite things to buy in the flower market over summer when it's looking good. There's kind of nothing like those weird little pod textures. It was all the rage the first few years that I was a floral designer. It's hardy, it lasts well as a cut flower. I just have never had good luck. It's similar to Cosmos. It has that fine, feathery, textured leaf, and I think they dry out really easily. And uh, even though I do have irrigation in some of my beds, it's just a little too, too tender in terms of its water needs at seedling stage for me to really take care of it. So it goes in the discard pile. Quinoa, I just don't, I mean, uh, I guess I didn't bother to alphabetize the discards. Uh, amaranthus <clears throat> is a pretty flower. 
Uh, it grows really well. It's it, it's pretty prolific. It was a bug magnet for some type of pest in my garden, so the leaves look terrible, but whatever that bug was, was obsessed with it and didn't really eat anything else. Uh, maybe someday I'll have a space, like maybe outside the fence where it can kind of scatter it around, but uh, in my video last week, I talked about things that didn't work for me, and this is one of the top annual cut flowers that was such a pain in the rear end to discard. The root systems, the stems at the end of the season were just gigantic. It generated a ton of waste, much more than my like small city compost area can handle. And I don't need more heavy lifting in terms of annual cleanup. Uh, Dianthus, Sweet William, black and white. It's not that I have any of it. This is two years old three years old now at this point, this seed. I had some luck with them, but I, um, the year that I tried a black flower garden, I did it under our old black walnut tree. So a lot of things did not do well there. Uh, Alternathera. This is a, an annual that you find a lot available in like the two, three dollar size with the annual foliage for containers. It's, you don't need to grow it from seed. It's very affordable. Gara. These were pretty easy to grow and produced really lovely plants or like small plants. I think based on what I was seeing, I think that a lot of the commercial Gara plants that you find in nurseries are multiple little plants put together to look like a more full plant. They grew. But how many do I need? I had I had a tray of 12 successfully turn into real plants. They're planted out front of my office in the meadow garden. They need to be shoveled around a little bit, but they should overwinter just fine. And I, I just don't need to grow more of them. I love heuchera. And my reason for buying heuchera seeds was that my husband was kind of uh, unhappy let's say, with the amount of heucheras I have bought over the years. But I think he's finally, now that the color stories in our gardens are starting to emerge, I think he sort of understands why I like them so much. And in my zone, they're evergreen, so you get some color at the front of the border all year round. And almost all of the ones that I have produce the most interesting colors of flowers. So I got some heuchera seeds just to try last year. They come in packs of 500 for like the $2.99 or whatever a seed pack is. I got some <laughs> to germinate and grow um, in the Firefly variety. The Palace Purple and then there was a red one that I could not keep the seedlings going. I did have a lot of problems last year in the seed starting part of the basement with damping off. There was a lot of humidity issues and uh, the seed starting mixes that I've used the last few years really struggle with keeping it moist. So I think some of the heuchera plants probably just damped off. Some of this I have to eliminate all the input that I have to put in to keeping them alive. And then um, an oriental poppy. Maybe this was free. It's called pizzicato. It's uh, per the perennial poppy. So I guess it's going to produce the the poppy roots, a popover plant versus um, the annual kind of corn or bread seed poppies. Uh, the colors are salmon, orange, scarlet. I just don't know why I have this. <laughs> it just does not sound like colors that I would use. They're not things that I want to dedicate the space and time to. So with that being said, really quickly, I'm gonna go through, I'll just flip through here and, um, but a lot more of direct sowing is in my future this year because, just because of how much work the garden has been this year, how much work I have to do still um, before spring comes. So I, I grew a couple thousand plants from seed last year. I would like to greatly reduce that number. Alyssum, 
a really affordable annual plant. I got these from Botanical Interest, which does carry, I like their packaging a lot. They, they were really pretty, easy to grow, direct sow, but alyssum is something that is fairly affordable in a six plant tray flat in the annuals container section of the nursery. I don't think I'll be buying more, but I have the seed. Angelica. So I was able to kind of, I knew I had a ton of seeds, so I didn't order a lot of flower seeds this year, uh, but I did order seeds from a UK based website called Plant World Seeds, where a friend of mine had ordered plants. And I focused on a lot of biennial or hardy perennial seeds from them. So I got this Angelica, which I would like to start and keep in container the first year because I believe it's a biennial. And then I would love to have this feature pretty heavily outside of our fence. So um, some asters. I, I have had hit or miss luck again with the asters. Asters are a nice little cut flower alternative to um, Cosmos, I think. They're a little more hardy, uh, definitely a little easier to manage in the uh, seedling containers. Ashrantia, uh, these are more plant world seeds. Ashrantia is a great cut flower. It's mostly imported. Um, it's really long lasting. It has, um, <laughs> we used to joke that for the first like six years of the vintage Pinterest wedding, that anytime somebody wanted wildflowers, what they were talking about was Astrantia, which I guess does have a magical wildflower look, but it is a highly cultivated <laughs> cut flower crop. I actually tried to buy it in bare root form, but uh, the company that I was trying to place a bare root, uh, like a bulk bare root order from, uh, unfortunately, they, they decided to close this year. So I'm growing Astrantia Maxima, Ruby Wedding and Shaggy. Uh, black Eyed Susan Vine, I'm growing the Bright Eyes, which is the white with the black center. I had that in my containers last year. It was very pretty. It grew well. The packet had a few seeds in it. I'm not gonna buy more, but if those germinate, that'll be great. Um, another plant world, Blue Plurum, Bronze Beauty. I actually really dislike green Blue Plurum, but I'm gonna try the Bronze Beauty. Radar Love Clematis, I think that might go in the discard pile. It gets the little hairy seed heads at the end, but I think it's a yellow bell-shaped trumpet flower, and it's a perennial. And I, I don't know that I'm willing to commit to growing a long-lasting perennial vine from seed, just because I don't know where I would put it that I would want it to stay forever. Columbine, Aquilegia. I'm trying something called Alchemist Gold and more Nora Barlow. Nora Barlow is like a really pretty, unusual looking columbine. And my shade garden, which was one of the first projects I got completed uh, under my maple, I guess I'm supposed to call it the, I'm trying to name all of these gardens, but it's under our Japanese maple. So it's the maple garden that has uh, about, 16 different varieties of columbine. Somebody gave me a whole bunch and I grew different ones from seed over the years and I had just had them. So it's become this like very interesting mix of columbine. So I'm gonna grow just a few of each of these. Nora Barlow I really love as cut flowers and the alchemist gold looks to be really pretty. Sometimes columbines are biennial, but they're also pretty, sometimes tender perennials here. So I find that by starting a few seedlings each year, I can just kind of pop them in next to the other ones. If I lose one, there's one there already growing. Uh, delphinium. I'm getting delphiniums in liner form and plug form. So plugs are generally tiny plants. Liners are slightly larger plants. I, I don't know enough about this world to tell you why those are the names, but, um, I have had some luck with delphiniums direct sown. I find them, everyone I've, I've heard from online has said that they're kind of challenging to start from seed. And I would agree because they kind of need cool temperatures to germinate, but then they need light to grow on once they germinate. And sometimes the heat of the lights is too tough. So I only have two of these low temp cannabis industry type of LED lights that don't throw off a ton of heat and are very, very bright, 
but I'm gonna try anything I feel like in the past that has kind of sizzled on the, under a more traditional T5 fluorescent light fixture. I'm gonna try under the lower temp LEDs. It's just not that, that I can't afford to replace all the lights that I currently have with lower temperature bulbs. Uh, silver drop eucalyptus. This actually feels like it's empty. This is one of, this is going to take a long time. Uh, I know a lot of cut flower farmers grow eucalyptus for bouquets. I really like it. And one thing, as I try to allow a lot of my perennials in my garden to mature, I wanted to have some foliage and things that I could cut to continue to make things with, without really like hacking into my perennials all the time. Eryngium, white glitter. White glitter is the green thistle. Um, it's been really hard to find white glitter as a plant form. And eryngiums, at least my experience, they grew blue glitter two years ago, and that was biennial. And so it grew, it flowered this year, planted it two years ago. So I think this again is gonna go in the pile of seedlings to start and probably grow on in containers for this year. I don't really want to put a lot of biennial stuff out in the beds until I, I know if it's working. To that end, these are all foxgloves and I have had pretty good success with foxgloves. Um, I have all different varieties. I've had really good luck with them self-sewing where I've left them and I started uh, several I started just two colors in large quantity last year and have two big drifts of them in the ground. And because they're biennial, I can see they're growing, they're fine, they're making it through winter. And what I will likely do is find probably one to two more varieties that complement those colors and start little seedlings to pop into that space so that I can try to get a rotation of every other year. Same for the hollyhocks. Almost all the hollyhocks I have here were allegedly, if you started them early, they were gonna be same year blooms. I have the Chatter series and I have Apricot Halo. I didn't see a hollyhock flower this year. So again, I know where they are. I planted them out. They've had some rust issues and they've had lost their leaves a couple times, but they're still there. So maybe this year I'll get some flowers. And then they're pretty prolific in terms of self-sewing. So hopefully if I like the ones that are there, I'll keep them there, let them drop seed, maybe collect a little seed and keep growing them on. Uh, larkspur. I like lavender colored larkspur. So I have smoky eyes, earl gray and misty. I'd better luck direct sewing it. It's sort of similar. It, I mean, they're related to delphinium. This one, Malva Sylvestris, very pretty color. Sort of reminds me of a hollyhock that has done well for me, that does flower each year called Zebrina, which Nicotiana, uh, Nicotiana is such a prolific self sewer that I would like to be a little more judicious about where I put it. Um, I let, Tinkerbell Nicotiana, which I don't see, but I think I have coming. Um, so t Tinkerbell is like a brownie reddish color that I really love. I think I, or I ordered a few seeds in like grower quantity where you buy a, a thousand, a mil or more, and they have not arrived, but that's okay. Um, I'm not in any hurry for them. Everywhere that I put Nicotiana last year, it self sowed that when I was weeding and planting fall bulbs and things like that, I couldn't believe how many teeny tiny Nicotiana plants were there. So I definitely don't need to start a ton from seed and <laughs> I need to be careful about where I put it. From botanical interests and penstemons, I love penstemon. The varieties that I have grown from seed would include Mystica, this is just listed as Dazzler Blend and Rocky Mountain Blue. Cherry Caramel Phlox, I used basically every single stem that grew from the garden this year. And it's easy enough to start a few. And then if I think this year I'm gonna be a little bit better about direct sowing every week, every 
two weeks with certain things because they were just so much fun to have as like sort of a filler in the garden. They complement so many of the colors that I like and they're easy enough to grow. Why do I have so many poppy seeds? Uh, poppies have been really hard for me to get to grow from seed. <clears throat> I just haven't, I mean, I love them. I just haven't had great luck with them growing where I want them to. And the few poppies that I had last year were sort of rogue. Um, these are, these are um, well, Mother of Pearl is currently listed as Hardy Biennial, according to Plant World. Lilac Pom Pom. Uh, they're a variety of California and red seed poppies. I am getting some in plug form from one of the, the seed brokers. Hopefully I'll do a little better with those. Um, last year I sort of tried, I think I might do it again on camera this year just to show you. I had sort of done the idea of um, multi-sowing where I just scattered a mix of poppy seeds in moist soil in trays and put it under the lights with the idea that I would grow them on and then sort of cut them into kind of poppy mats and then pot those up. And what happened was, because I've struggled with keeping consistent moisture with my seedlings. I would lose some, start some more, lose some, start some more. So I may try it again because I think if I manage the number of seedlings I start, I might be able to do uh, a better job of ensuring that they stay consistently watered. Pulsatilla. If you're not familiar with this plant, I think you should look it up. Not only does it have like the most amazing Muppet-like seed heads, it is just, they're an unusual kind of weird alpine woodland looking flower. And they just feel like, I think alpine's the right word because they're kind of hairy and furry. So they look like they're suited for like crisp mountain temperatures. Um, Plant World had a whole bunch of them. So again, I had, this was definitely like a major wish list plant for me. I had, um, I was trying to get them bulk in bare root and this, the broker that I was going through decided to close this year. Queen Anne's lace, lace flower, blue, pink. All of these easy. Throw the seeds out, wait a couple weeks, throw some more seeds out. You'll have flowers all summer. Rudbeckia. I, I threw these in here. I don't know that I'm going to grow anymore. I, uh, Rudbeckia, I mean, really easy to grow. Not a hard plant to start, not a hard seedling to take care of. Just, um, a lot of the varieties are like tender perennial in my area. Mm, I grow so many dahlias and zinnias are kind of the same time, same shape. Uh, they're just not a flower that I find myself like dying to cut from the garden. So scabiosas, scabiosas is all very easy to grow from seed, grew them, grew so many of them. Uh, had some kind of problem with one color where I lost the entire tray. Um, or I think I lost the entire, I tried to do a couple of tricky things with germination. Um, I won't be doing that to scabiosis seeds again. Uh, Thelictrum, uh, commonly known as meadow rue. I have a pretty common meadow rue. I don't know its name, but it, it's pretty readily available at nurseries, but there are so many varieties that are really cool that you can't really find in nurseries. So I was happy, uh, this is actually the, the plant, the reason why I decided to place an order from Plant World. And they're shipping from the UK, so you wanna at least make sure you're getting enough to make the shipping charges worthwhile. But, um, so I just think they're, they're pretty interesting. Uh, they're a height that I like. They're kind of a mid to almost back of the border height but they have a kind of nice clumpy foliage and these really pretty kind of flowery seed heads that come up. And that's just like a texture I like. I kind of picture the garden as it grows on and they're perennial. So the, I, their packets are not huge, but I feel like maybe 10 to 
12, 15 seeds per, so I ended up getting a couple packets, but my goal would be to try to germinate many, save the strongest specimens, kind of grow them on, and treat them like future perennial nursery plants rather than just throw them straight into the ground as teeny tiny plants. Because I think they're super unusual. And I know from experience, at least in the cut flower world, that in order for seed starts, seed starting nurseries, and then the uh, wholesale nurseries to introduce something new, there has to be like a little bit of demand from the market. And I'm hoping because, you know, I think that I have interesting taste in flowers that by seeking out some of these harder to find seeds, harder to find varieties like the thelictrums or the pulsatillas, if I cut with them and, and arrange with them, and you guys are excited about them, that we'll start to see the plants become a little bit more available. Sunflowers. I like the plum ones. And I have a green one. I, I They grew really well for me two years ago. This past year, the summer was so crazy and chaotic with all the work that was getting done by me around here. Anything that needed like late spring, early summer direct sowing, I just didn't do. And the entire rest of this pile is sweet peas. Uh, actually, I was kidding, but <laughs> nope, it is. I love sweet peas. I actually just posted an Instagram picture featuring some Japanese sweet peas, which is just like the most mad majestic long stems. Um, I, I did okay with my sweet peas from last year. I started about 12 different varieties. I didn't start every single seed that I had, so I have last year's varieties and some new ones. Uh, but again, uh, no, and I planted them in a place where we didn't have drip irrigation running. They weren't getting enough water. They really do need water. So this year, I think I am gonna make an effort to put a few more of them in the potager, in the vegetable area, because that has tons of irrigation in place. And I do think it would be nice to add more flowers and color to that area. And then I have a few other places where I have some trellis options and trellis ideas in the beds that have irrigation. Uh, and I'm going to start them earlier and get them outside earlier. Really didn't get them outside soon enough and they started to get all crazy. And this year I really focused on a lot of the blues. I had turquoise lagoon last year, which is a lavender turquoise combo. I thought it was so pretty. So I just started buying up every blue base lavender <laughs> color I could find. And sweet pea seeds individually can be sort of expensive, but uh, I think if I do a better job of collecting seeds, and also doing what I did last year, which is not using all the seed in the packet, but saving some, I will be able to, uh, at some point, stop buying sweet pea. And then I'm saving my zinnia seeds. I'm not buying anymore this year. I know people love them, but they are just not a flower that I get super excited about. I would rather have a dahlia. And some of the giant zinnias, I understand they're a lot easier to grow than a dahlia, but they're just as big sometimes as a four inch dahlia. And I just think the colors in dahlias and roses are more subtle. It's probably a combination of, you know, don't get me wrong, the queen lime red and the queen lime blush are beautiful, beautiful zinnias when you get those like great specimens, but some of the fancies, the Zinderella series, or I have Aztecs, like, they're okay. They're just not really my cup of tea. It's not a judgment if you love them. It's just that all of this is so much work. <laughs> like Marie Kondo would say, it needs to spark joy for you, you know? If you're growing something, and it, this is a lot of work to keep seeds organized, to buy them, to start them from seed to make sure you sow them so they're gonna live. Why put that effort into something that you're not like super excited about? I know that it's a short turnaround. It's an easy enough cut flower that makes people happy. I certainly understand why there's a market for it. It's just not something that I feel like 
I need going forward. I would rather focus a lot of my future seedlings on flowers that self-sow prolifically if they're annuals, so I can kind of get them in place and leave them there, or start growing some of these more unusual perennials from seed. Because I get my kind of flash from my different categories of kind of show-stopping flowers. I have bearded iris and peonies, then I have roses all summer, then I have, you know, dahlias. Um, right now, I just saw the first hellebores. I have, so and then this, I, fortunately, I finally landed on a collection that is a more affordable option. I ordered mums from King's Mums, which are rooted mum cuttings for a bunch of heirloom varieties. And so the idea would be to start adding the mums into the same color grouping so that after the dahlias start to fade, I have some semi-hardy mums to kind of carry things through. In most cases, our temperatures hold for them until sometime in December. Everyone always asks you what your favorite flower is. Well, I have favorite flowers for each season, each month, sometimes each week. I really prefer to work with whatever looks good. And whenever growers used to ask me what they should grow, I always would say the same thing. Grow whatever you can make the most beautiful flowers with. If it's hard to grow, if it needs a ton of staking, if they fall over, if the stems are weak, things like that, even if it's an Instagrammable flower, don't grow it because it, it doesn't matter how beautiful it is if it's not durable and long lasting. So that was why I went down the road of bearded iris. They are a very difficult to travel flower. I love what they do in an arrangement and they are so hard to find as cut flowers, they have such a short window where they can be shipped from usually Oregon that I wanted to put them in. So I realized we've kind of wandered away from seeds. So I'll pull it back. No, I won't be growing every single one of these. And I know lots of people like the photo album boxes for organizing. Last year, I just used, these are my old gift boxes. From, I did delivery orders. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna put them in for now. Uh, I, separately, just really quickly, I have two grasses, blue grandma gas, gr blue grandma grass, and northern sea oats. Grasses are super easy to start from seed. And then I really like shiso at, or perilla as it's sometimes known. It's a savory herb for cooking, but it grows maybe two and a half to four feet tall, depending on the conditions. It's really pretty as a foliage. Uh, pink sage, very pretty. Uh, marshmallow. Some of these things feel like they should go in the potage because they're like medicinal. Hyssop, anise hyssop, mountain mint. Mountain mint is a really prolific thing in the cut flower trade. It's the type of mint, it grows a little taller and it gets these kind of like purpley, almost button looking flowers. Uh, it's been hard to find in plant form, so I got some seeds. Um, and it's also not invasive and spreading, like traditional mints you have to keep in a container or they will just run wild on you. So mountain mint, lemon balm, another thing like shiso, beautiful. Fennel has become one of my favorite kind of filler plants because it's like evergreen here. So to that end, I also got a dill, a similar uh, Indian coriander. It's like a flowering coriander. And then so many types of basil. Thai basil, purple basil, Siam queen Thai basil. Uh, if I remember correctly, I didn't love this Aromato from Florette. Cinnamon basil, purple basil, more Thai basil, more amethyst basil, uh, Agastache, which is basically just like the other Agastache. I think I just keep it in, I think I keep it in the herb pile because this one was less about the flowers and more about the leaves. 
Um, and Atriplex, which I think is really only on Johnny's Select Seeds, but it's under flowers, but it's basically like a grassy, leafy foliage texture. It's super long lasting as a cup flower. I didn't plant any this year because it was part of those summer direct sows that I sort of didn't do, but um, it, it, it worked really well. So I think that and the blue pleurum, the bronzy blue pleurum will be pretty together. All right guys, so th that's where I'm at with my seeds. This stuff in this box is vegetables, which doesn't look like it, but I severely edited what the plan for the vegetable garden was. Uh, the, the potager was an evolving process if you watched any of last year. And now I know how much space, what's getting enough sun, at what time of year I need to start things. I think everybody was kind of scrambling when the shutdown started to figure out what they were going to grow, what they were going to do. And uh, so it was hard to find starter plants and all kinds of stuff. So. I have a better grip on what we actually ate out of the garden last year, and that's really what I'm gonna focus on going forward. I know that I do not need to grow every type of pumpkin, every type of squash, every type of lettuce. I need to focus on the things that we will eat every single day, and that's how I'm gonna use that space. And it may end up being that, that those raised beds have space for more of like a cut flower type of thing but if i do that i'll really be doing it just as like to use the space not because i ever envision not growing flowers for cutting in my beds because that's kind of the whole whole thing i'm trying to prove out with this is that you can have beautiful perennial gardens full of all kinds of incredible plants and fill them in with a mix of cut flowers for cutting in annual form and biennials that you sow every year so that you have flowers in the landscape and also have a few to grab and bring into your home. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Happy seed starting or seed ordering, or if you're one of those people that was really annoying and ordered all your seeds before December. And if not, keep ordering because all the seed companies are finally opening up. A lot of them were holding off on orders till January, which was nice, which means there's availability. But looking at this, I don't really think there's much that I need or that I'll be missing. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.